Good morning, folks. The sun keeps erupting. We watch the world go into magnetic universe mode in the articles. We've got a funny climate paper and a stunner on disaster events over millions of years. We're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours looking like sunspot maximum. We haven't had major flares, the solar wind is calming at Earth, and we've got a coronal hole incoming on the south. During the couple hours the satellite's solar view was eclipsed by the Earth this morning, the southern incoming filament released. You can see it here lifting, and then the satellite eclipse, and then it's gone with its little brother filament watching from back home until he gets a little older. CME will miss and is just becoming visible on SOHO. We will be watching that second filament still up there as it turns into face Earth this weekend. Of course, we already had that previous CME eruption, and that minor CME should be arriving tomorrow or Thursday. Overall, our star getting active. Let's go to the magnetic universe. Now folks, while I put very little stock in things like CERN, especially after all their failures, when their theory moves towards the focus on the minute magnetism of the cosmos, it's very challenging to say this is as wasteful as looking for fake dark matter. And from that ultra small to the ultra large, folks, what happens when the supposed black hole flares work and act just like they would from any other star? In one of the coolest animations I've ever seen, the galactic center is shown doing two things. First, pumping out a galactic wind that is radial just like the solar wind from the sun, and the triggered flare and explosive release is just like a CME. I still remember when nothing escaped a black hole. More focused today, however, on the continued scalability of the sun and galaxy confirming the existence of the radial rippling galactic current sheet. This paper is a bit goofy. Kudos for putting an enormous amount of blame on the ozone loss, but 10 points from Hufflepuff for once again blaming the human pollution, which hasn't been as much of an issue for decades and everyone says is recovering. But of course, the ozone isn't recovering as well, and people like this never seem to realize it's because Earth's magnetic field is weakening. That's only about 3 to 5% of the authors that write on this topic. But alas, at least the paradigm shifts slightly from carbon pollution in his mind, and that's a golf clap. Last and most certainly not least, the 1500-year Dansgaard Oscar cycle, the quarter harmonic of the Heinrich events, all matching the solar outbursts, has been true for millions and millions of years. And here, it's not just polar issues every 1,500 years, but clear evidence for monsoonal effects as well. All of the Dio events more recently also affect the monsoon, and of course, from year to year and over centennial and millennial timescales, up to the DO events, it is the sun controlling them through the same activity. That's chapter 4 in our textbook, by the way, which you can get at otf.cells.com along with a bunch of other items. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.